Okay, so I am going to come down to one of the most common blood tests that we're going to. It's either a profile or a screen, okay? Which means that it's just a generalized blood test, okay? To look at internal organs, to look at your major organs, to look at your hematology, I'll introduce the term hematology as well in the study of blood. Okay, what, what does it mean? So hematology is usually divided into two different components, hematology and biochemistry. Hematology is a study of red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Okay, come back to that in a bit. Biochemistry is the study of the chemicals in a biological animal. Okay, so to break it down a little bit, blood, um, and this I only knew in that college. I thought it was just red and that's it. Okay, but blood is actually much, much more than that. It's quite interesting. So in the blood itself, it's a red blood cell component that makes it red. So which also means that if I spin, if I take a bit of blood and I put it in a centrifuge, uh, a spinning machine, okay, to spin it down. So it's just like the whole idea of centrifuge, it's just like us swinging something. The heavier bits will go to the end, and not so heavy towards the center of the, uh, 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 the, the swinging motion, so to speak. Okay, so if I should spin the blood down and I look at it, okay, what I'll get is the heaviest bit at the bottom, usually the red blood cell. Okay, then after that, there's a little white layer over there, okay, it's known as a buffy coat, and that is usually where the white blood cells are. And on top, there should be a clear portion, okay, uh, and that is the uh, what we call the serum. I think it's just using a normal tube with no preservatives and things like that. So I say again, three different components the red bed, the red blood cells, the buffy coat, the white blood cells, and a clear component on top. Okay, so that is what blood is. If I shake it again, it becomes blood. If I spin it down, it goes to those three portions. Okay, so the red blood cell is the bit that makes the blood red. And the top there shouldn't be red at all, unless the red blood cells have broken down due to other issues. And then you see a red tinge uh, top, but you should see which one's parent. Okay? And then you get the buffy coat there. So that, that is blood. Okay, so when we look at hematology, we are we're studying the, the red blood cells. Whether it's enough, is, it, is the shape okay? We are studying the white blood cells. Whether it is enough, is that too much? Is that too little? And if so, what is in the white cells? Okay? And the platelets are little, little bits that is essential for clotting. Okay? Biochemistry, we're studying the top bit, the clear bit. What chemicals are inside there? Because blood is not just red blood cells. There's a lot of things in there. What chemicals are inside there? Then it's coming down to the uh, different uh, enzymes, different, uh, which we'll go through that in a bit as well. So, that's a lot. Good question. Okay, very, very good question. The ratio. So there's this term which I'll introduce in a bit. So just hang on to that. Hematology. Okay, so the whole idea of hematology, as I said, it is to uh, find out about the red blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. Okay. How do they actually do that? Okay, they actually physically count it with a machine. So what they do is they run the blood through, and they have a little light shining through. Um, the, the, the cells, and seeing how much light goes through, they, have, they can tell you what sort of cells those are. So they can actually count how many red blood cells in proportion, and how many white blood cells in proportion. So they actually physically count it. So that is why, if you have a bad something technique, and the red blood cell is all damaged, the count is artificial low, uh, artificially low. So that's why they put something technique. Okay? So they actually physically count it with a machine. Okay? Um, and you using a light, uh, it's not physically counted, but you know, using light and, they, and that's how you count it. And sometimes that is also why uh, in cats, especially, the red blood cells, they uh, tend, uh, sorry, the platelets, they tend to have platelet clumps. Okay? So they count it as one, even though there's like 50. Yeah, so that is why sometimes in cats, the platelet count on the machine is low. But they always check. Okay, all good hematology should always check the blood film. So you get a hematologist looking down at the blood film and looking why at the Why don't you get the platelets? Why don't you get them in the blood? Cats do it. Why? Because they can. Because yeah, it, it's just more sticky. It's just more sticky than yeah. usual, and uh, and so they do it. Another interesting breed is the King Charles Cavalier Span, and they got macro platelets. The yeah. platelets are much bigger. So even though it is big and it can be uh, more efficient than 
as, as well as TP payloads is from the phones. So that is the one of those. And just remind us, payloads is for porting. So whenever there's a little damage to the bat, to the base or something, the payloads are just going to go there and block it before all, all the other copies are just to stop the bleeding. Yeah, so that is uh, important for porting. So basically counted. Yep. So pack cell volume or PCV, okay, as it's more commonly known for, it is what we discussed about anemia. Okay, so you're talking about proportion, good question. So usually for dogs, okay, the proportion of red blood cells is always expressed as a percentage. Okay, so it's between 45 and 55 percent. Which also means that if I spin the blood down, and I see the proportion over here, 45 to 55 percent should be the red blood cell. Does that make sense? Yep, okay, and that's how we saw. Check that, okay. If it is too little, say it's only that much red blood cell, and that huge amount of fluid on top, okay, 25%, say, that is probably anemic. Okay, if it's the other way around, 60, 80%, all red blood cell, tiny little body coat, then you get a tiny little bit of fluid, fluid on top, 80%, that's probably dehydration or something else. It's always proportion. Not enough fluid, the red blood cell will appear to be more. Does it make sense? Yeah. Two little red blood cells, it will look as though it's very tiny. So it's a meaning. Yeah? Okay? So that is the whole idea of PCV. So that's also another thing that we check in hematology. Is the dog a meaning? Is the pet a meaning? Is the proportion right? Not. Yep. White blood cells. Um, white blood cells. Okay, so white blood cells are the little buffy coat. There are quite a few different white blood cells. Uh, I've only listed one of the more, which I feel is the more obvious important one. Okay? Neutrophils. Lymphocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. So, for all these components, it's always looking whether it's too much or too little. Usually, there's always some. If it's too much, we'll ask ourselves why. If it's too little, we'll ask ourselves why as well. Yeah? Okay, so let's go through a little bit. Neutrophils is in charge of that, that's the biggest proportion of what we ourselves is usually neutrophils. It's uh, usually sort of talking about inflammation and or infection. So, if you get an elevation of neutrophils, it will probably indicate that the body is producing more for a reason, inflammation and or infection. Yep. And the lymphocytes is a sort of guard cells that's more around. So that one is the one that is a little bit slower to respond. So if you get high neutral field, okay, so it's indicating inflammation and infection. If you get high lymphocytes, telling you it's probably ongoing for some time already. So that's a bit slow to respond. Yep. And sometimes in very acute infection, Neutral fields drops all the way down because it's all been used up. Okay, then it's in, then then just get a bit of high lymphocyte going on, indicating that okay, there's active infection, and the animal is probably in trouble because it's used up all its neutral fields. The body isn't producing as much as it's being used for the fight off the inflammation and infection, usually infection. Yep. Okay. Uh, eosinophil is more for parasitic, so if you get lung worm, if you get any sort of parasite uh, 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 involvement, you get the uh, you know your basophil going high. Basophil is a very small little cell which is very specific conditions which I'm not too concerned about. But those are the three main things. And you will, technical term, you will hear the word failure or penia. Like neutrophilia means too much. Neutropenia means too little. Okay? Uh, eosinophilia, too much. Eosinophenia. So those are common terms that they like name and also yeah, or tell too much of the Another thing that we look at in hematology that is also very uh, important in the platelets as we discussed. So it affects the clotting ability. So if the the platelets should be of a certain amount. If it is too little, you we will always check on the blood film whether that count is real or not. Don't and, and don't forget we are we are relying on the machine that to the learning machines. Okay, just because it's a little bit of a shot. So if on the blood film you actually cannot see any platelets like physically, that result is probably right. If on the blood film you see platelets or you see platelet clumps, then you know that okay, I'm not too concerned. This dog or cat is not going to be having any clotting issues because I can actually see the platelets. We know the machine is this other one. Yeah. And uh, if you have two little platelets, it's what we call thrombocytopenia. So that is also another term that. Uh, so uh, that's hematology.